get started on, you're going to introduce me to talk about some uh, ACA code. So what we're going to be doing is turn it way down, scale it down to very practical code. We've seen some wonderful, wonderful um, code this morning. Um, unfortunately, it's going to go right down the hill today in this talk, but uh, at least it'll be fun because it's going to be live code, so I'll rely on you to spot the horrible typos. Um, I worked at Cake, do all sorts of interesting stuff, email, um, Twitter handle, and GitHub address. So um, let's just see what we're building. So what we would like to do is to have an app that we can take our phone and scan coins, just like that. And so what we would like to see is that there are two coins. And uh, there will be three coins in this scenario. In fact, I've made a video uh, earlier. And this is, this is the sort of video that we'll be sending. And what we expect is to see the coordinates of the coins as we send them from the phone over HTTP, process through our ACA application, overwrap them to some computer vision code in C++, um, and we have 40 minutes to do it. So it won't be quite so hard. I know it sounds really scary, but it will be actually relatively easy. All the code is on GitHub, so I'm sure you can get it, get it all running, as long as you have not Windows. <laughs> all right, so here's, here's what it is, right? I have an iOS, iOS code that actually deals with a camera, encodes some H.264 stream, um, I turn it into these blobs, so I don't I actually leave the bytes as they arrive. These are still just binary blobs of data. Uh, it's only the stuff that goes back is going to be JSON. We're going to use RabbitMQ as the broker, so we have native components at the end of it. Um, in case my C++ code set faults, just uh, every now and, it, now and again it does that, so I can use RabbitMQ to deal with the routing and restart the components. I can restart the components and then still rely on, on RabbitMQ's routing. The rest of the code is quite simply Spray, which is an HTTP layer around ACA, and uh, we're gonna we're going to write it all in Scala. So how hard can that be? These are all the classes, really, that we will need. So we have two interfaces that we'll be building. We'll have a, a command line interface that we can get started with. And then really, really, really simply, we're going to wrap it around a RESTful API. So we'll actually have a proper HTTP server that can receive streaming responses or other chunked HTTP posts. Uh, we'll be sending several messages to us. So we'll be sending this begin message to start a session, because you know, presumably you all have this app. It will be on the app store. It will be the, the next best thing. So suppose you all have it. You will need to maintain multiple sessions. So that's the begin command. And then during the session, we will receive many different smaller messages. So for each session, I can either accept a single image, where someone posts an image to me, say I want to provide an API, or I can receive a chunk of a frame, so that's a bit of the MPEG stream, or I can get a little info about a session. And finally, say for management purposes, I want to be able to list all the recognition sessions. So I have a little management API that says, right, who's, who's doing, who's using my system? They all go into a coordinator that's going to coordinate creating many of these recognition session actors. And they will be talking over AMQP. There are C++ components underneath. I'm not even going to show them. And uh, they'll be replying, they'll, they'll be receiving images and frames. And they will pack the data that we send through. So that's pretty much it for slides. Let's write some code. All right. So here we have it. We have a little shell. So we'll start with something that runs on the command line, just so we can get started and we can see something moving. So here it is. Um, if I run it, it's not going to do, do anything quite pleasant. I mean, at any command that you type in, so even if I say begin, say, you know, it's not really cooperating. So the only thing I can do really is to quit. That's kind of all right, but maybe we would like to have something slightly more exciting. So. Before we do that, let's sort of break our app into, I guess we could call it layers, but don't worry, this is not JE. What we're going to have is a little core of the app and an API. 
So if I just define a tray Q core, and that's going to contain some clever machinery that actually does the recognition. And then I can have the API. So that will expose, that will wrap it in some restful wonderfulness. So I can just write this, trait API, and I'm going to say that the API depends on the core somehow. It has to be mixed in when I make an instance of API. And so I get access here to everything inside core. I write in Kafka, so suppose I say that somehow in core there is this now system of my Kafka system. So, so now inside API, I can have system. Because what I've expressed with this self-type annotation, any Scala, just before we go on, how many of you have done Scala? Oh, excellent. Those, you, those of you who haven't, don't worry, I will not show anything too terrible. Um, so in this way, I say, when I make an instance of API, I promise to mix in core. That's all I'm saying. So this is a self-type annotation. Now, all right, so I have the two layers, which is all right, so let's, let's see what we can do with the core. So I have the active system. Because we are going to be dealing with RabbitMQ and EMQP, what I'm going to need is a connection factory. So if anyone's done RabbitMQ and EMQP, you know you need some sort of EMQP connection factory, which is a connection factory. So, and unfortunately, we also need to set the host. Let's say it's localhost. That's where the AMQP broker is running. I happen to have one running. I haven't shown that, but if there is one. I didn't, it would complain. And what I'm going to do, remember we had the two actors that we talked about. We had the coordinator that coordinates all the sessions, and then we had the recognition session actor that actually deals with each of these individual sessions. Well, we can, we can create those two, right? Coordinator. Oh, actually, before I do that, let's do let's deal with AMQP connection, which is an actor now. Ops of new connection owner in connection factory. There we go. So this whole thing makes an AMQP connection, which is an actor. So I can set send it messages, and it's going to deal with connecting to the AMQP broker. And once I have this connection, I, create, I can create smaller actors that deal with, say, RPC or communication on a specific channel through a specific exchange. But we'll see that in just a moment. Um, and finally, I can create this coordinator actor. Coordinator as a system actor of Constructor requires the MQP connection, so it knows how to make all of those new connections. So this is probably it. I'm quite happy with this being the core of my system. Now, what you might be looking at is you might be thinking, oh well, this this configuration, I wouldn't want to have this hard-coded string straight inside the core of my system. So I'll show you one thing that I usually do for configuration. Um, we'll, we'll define another trait. So let's have a trait for called, called core configuration. Um, and that defines the AMQP connection factory. I type AMQP connection factory. No, connection factory. Like that. Okay, excellent. And then what I'm going to say is that core depends on core configuration. So I've just sort of done some gymnastics, but uh, unfortunately I am missing now an implementation of this. So I can create one here, so because I'm a nice person, I want to provide a configuration here for convenience. Config for configuration, and that's going to use the type safe config. Don't worry that that's just the name of a library, so it's a essentially JSON-like file that is available to me when I start an active system. So I'm going to do something like this. In fact, it's a lot of typing. I might cheat a little and just grow. Yeah, let's just grow like 
so, and one more. So, just to say the typing, I would define that core configuration that stands for config core configuration that stands for configuration, and it builds the AMTP connection factory by looking up a cm.amtp.host string in a config file that's available when I start the active system. So, so far, so good. Now, what you've seen, the, this cheat that I've done, the code is on GitHub, so you can follow these cheats yourselves. So you can build it up yourself if you type, or you can just next, 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 step through the code. All right, so what I need to do is now actually use it right in the shell. So nothing could be simpler. I can just mix in core with config core configuration. Let's see if I don't do it. This is the compiler, right? Because I say that core requires to be, its instances needs to have the core configuration mixed in. And so if I don't do that here, it's complaining. If I mix in just core configuration, well, that's still not good enough because I've mixed in core configuration, which defines the method AMTP connection factory, but no implementation, no body. So it's now saying, well, you can't do that because you haven't implemented the method. So luckily, I've been good enough and provided one in here. And so this is now perfectly fine. Everyone's happy. Uh, what I should do as well is to shut down the active system. That is the end. Okay, so far so good. So I can now run this application and it will look just like it did previously, except it now actually started the active system and made a connection to the MTP broker. You, can, you, have to, you just have to take my word for it. Luckily, we didn't see no output. But what I can do is see, type still, type just quit, but now that's all you see. Unfortunately. All right, so let's add more things to it. Let's try to begin a session. Do it by typing, right? Nothing could be simpler. So what we're going to do is look at our coordinate interactor. So here it is. Now, the implementation is missing. So it's the three question marks. That's my convenient Scala trick. You write some code write a method and you just can't quite be bothered with the body of the code just yet. So you can type, type in three question marks, uh, which is a valid value, frame the return value, uh, but unfortunately it throws an error when you tr actually try to execute it. Nevertheless, it compiles, so it's actually really quite convenient. Now, that's really, that won't do for us now. So what we're going to have to do is react to the begin message. So someone sends us a begin message. So this syntax says, a begin message carries the minimum number of coins that we are willing to accept. I don't actually want to see, I don't care about that number here. What I would like is to receive the entire instance of begin because what am I going to do with it? Well, I need to create this recognition actor. So let's just do that, recognition slash an actor. So what is it called? Well, never mind what it's called just yet. Text after off. So this is where we receive, the coordinator receives a message to begin a session, and then it's going to create individual instance of the recognition session actor for every session. So it's completely isolated. Each session, so if you have multiple clients, they would be completely isolated from each other. So it's going to be a new record session actor, and that wants an AMTP connection and an actor that's going to return the response in some way. I call it Java. Unfortunately, it has nothing to do with Java Java. It just prints stuff out on print on standard output. Nevertheless, we can call it Java if we like. After off, so we create one Java. Another actor. We can we create one Java actor when this actor starts. So a coordinator creates one Java that's going to receive all the responses. It's going to print them out on standard output and it's going to give it to every session that gets created. All right, what we're going to do as well, I guess for our convenience, is to give the session actor a random name, one that we like. Suppose we want to use UIDs for it. So now we have a recognition session actor, call it RSA TV. And uh, that's still not enough, right? What we would like to be able to do now 
is to take this message that we received and send it to the record session actor, forward it to it. So we can do just that, forward B. So we will take that message, that B that we received, and to take it as it is and just forward it to B. So now the newly created record session actor is going to see this message begin. All right, so that's, that's that. Let's see how our record session actor looks like. Now that's going to be slightly more complicated because we will take the recognition session through quite a number of states. Right? So this will actually modify its state as it goes along. So you see, we start here. This is this is completely empty, so we need to sort of give it a bit of a hint. So when do we where do we start? How does how do we begin? When someone makes an instance of record session actor, what does it actually look like? Well, we're going to say that start with a state called idle, idle, and we're going to stay here for the stay, state timeout. <coughs> really? Sorry, this is empty. So this is the state name, and this is the data associated with that state. So when we start this instance, this actor, we start in the idle state with empty data. Nothing's happening. All right. Well, remember, when we are in the state idle, and we will be willing to stay here for up to, what did I say, 60 seconds, all right. So if I create an instance of this actor, and I don't receive a message in this state, then 60 seconds later, I get a timeout. And we'll see how we can handle that. Nevertheless, when we're empty, when we're idle, then when we receive an event, which is begin, with some minimum number of points, um, regardless of you know what the data is for now, we're going to reply to the sender with the with our ID, with the session ID, with the UUID that we were given. So, how do we do that in Scala? Well, it sort of looks like the Erlang communication between processes. So we'll say sender bang self par name. So we replied with a string to whoever sent us the begin message. Now, this is red, right? Because the return, the return type of, of bang is, is unit, except what we need to return is a new state. Because we're in an FSM, and so the question is, where do we go next? So we were idle, we received the begin message, and I happen to have a state called active. So we can do that. And now it's happy. So we've started, we were in the idle state, we had empty data, we received the begin message, and we go to the active state. And I'm sure we do something really exciting in the active state, but let's leave that for now. And what we need to do here is to initialize the Akai FSM. Okay, so that's all good. What we can do is now wire in the begin command in the shell. So if I type in begin, specifying the minimum number of coins, then I am going to, it's called count, I'm going to send the coordinator, the message, begin, count to int. Okay, well that seems actually fairly reasonable. Let's, let's see if we can run, right? So what happens when we run? Let's follow the flow. Well, not really, right? We get some sort of error. 
coordinator makes state active does not exist. That's the first problem. And second problem, if you look here in our record session actor, we replied to whoever sent us a message with the name that we were given. But I don't, we don't see it, right? This is, this is slightly awkward. So we began a session, and when I communicate with that session, I would like to know its ID. But it's not there, so what can we possibly do? Now, it's, it, I guess it's here, right? Could we tell the coordinator to begin? And so in this scenario, does anyone know who the sender is? So in this case, when I say coordinator bang begin, who sent the message? It's one answer, but we know you know. Does anyone else know? <laughs> okay, I'll show you. I, it's, it's really quite interesting. So the bang method takes a message, that's begin. And then the second parameter is a sender, which is an actor record. Now, what we say is that that should be implicitly available, but if it isn't, its value is no sender. So in this particular case, well, there is no one, so to speak, who sent the message. So why don't we actually provide a value for sender? Why don't we create a small actor here whose job is only to display the returned messages? So let's, let's do that. So it needs to be an implicitly available value, so just sit now, we don't even have to give it a name, and just because we can, let's use the actor VSL. Actor of new act, and we would receive a message, some X, we print line it. Let's print line it with these little dashes. Um, come on. There we go. Right, that's better. So th this is, I now have an instance with a name underscore, if I like, I could have called it who, but it doesn't really matter. It's implicitly available, and so it's going to become the value that's applied to the second parameter of the bang method. And so, when I run this now, and I type begin, the UUID that I've generated, that I'm replying with, come on, I don't want the second copy, this first one will do just fine. So when I say begin one, here is the message. That's the response. That's the thing that I sent back here. And I'm sending it back to sender. In this particular case, sender is this, this underscore actor that I have in shell. All right, excellent. Now, I have one little exercise before we speed up. How about we now list the available sessions? Right, that, that, should, that shouldn't be too hard. What would we like to do? We would like to have a get sessions command, and what we are going to say, coordinator bang get sessions. So far, so good, right? And what we're expecting back is a list of strings, list of those UIDs represented as strings. So why don't you help me type that up? Let's start. Let's let's start really simply. So when I receive get sessions. What do I reply back? S suppose I just send back to the sender the names of all child actors. So let's see. Children, so these are the child actors of this particular actor. But I don't want to send back the actors themselves or the references to them. I want to send their names. So I'll map every child to its uh, name. And I don't want to send back an iterable send back a list. List. And I send the bang back. That's nearly it, right? So I want to send back all the children of the coordinator actor. Except there's one extra child. Can anyone spot it? So this is supposed to list all the sessions. Jabber, that's the one. How do I get rid of it? Yeah, we'll filter. Exactly. So, filter. So what do we do? Well, we filter everything that's not Jabber. Like that. Easy enough. What we, of course, we could have written, you know, x, x not Jabber. But we might as well save ourselves some typing. Like that. Not equal. All right. Well, let's see it. Go. 
in one and another bit in and five in plus. That's those are the two sessions I've created. Those are the two children of coordinator actor, but not Jabba. Right, excellent. Right. Let's very quickly wire in all the remaining commands. That's a lot of typing. So let's just move here straight up. There we are. So these are all the commands we have available for us. We can receive a GIN message, as we had before, but we can now also receive a single image and frame chunk. Those are the interesting ones. This is where the meat really begins. So we go back to our recognition session, and this is, this is where we're going to be typing stuff. So, we've now gone to, gone to the active state. So when we're in the active state, for some specific timeout, then when we receive a message that contains message and data for now, then we will go to completed. This is really, really simple. We'll pretend that we don't do anything just yet, and we'll fill in the details in just a minute. What we would also like to be able to do now is to define this state um, completed. What do we do when we are in a completed state? Um, and we're not going to do anything. Um, and I have also another state called abort. This is when we time out or something. And let's also do empathy behavior. And when we in, in any state, when we receive a message that we don't really understand, then we, we can define that as a global handler in when unhandled. So when we receive a message that in any state that we don't really understand in any of these functions, then we're going to do what we type here. And what I would like to actually apply is some global behavior. So when we have state timeout, with any data, we go to abort it. So if any, at any state we time out, we just go to the aborted state. And that's all we're going to do. Last thing is this empty behavior, which is a state function uh, that actually does nothing interesting. It just stays in this state forever. So whatever message it receives, it's not going to move to any other state. The empty behavior. Once you, so essentially what we're saying is, once you hit completed or aborted, that's it. You're there forever. So that's pretty much it. That's all, you know, that's the main crux of RKFSM. It's how the messages go in. It's how we move from one place to another. But that wouldn't be enough, right? That's nowhere near enough for, for what we are trying to build. Because what we now need to deal with is AMQT. So we have Akka, we're running in the JVM, all jolly good, but I now need to connect to the MQT broker so that I can send these messages to actually be processed. So let's do just that. We need to get ourselves on, we need to get our hands on the AMQT connection by grabbing one from the connection owner. So we're going to uh, create a child actor for a, given a particular MQT connection. And what we are going to have is, this is quite a horror from the past, but RPC client. We will actually be sending a message and waiting for a reply, but in a non-blocking, jolly good, asynchronous way. <coughs> we'll see in just a minute. All right, excellent. But what we wouldn't want to leak all these AMQT connections. So after stopping, also like to do is to stop the, con the AMQT active. Okay, well this is, this is nearly there, right? Except post stop somehow implies that we have decided to stop or someone decided to stop us. So the question is when does that happen? Well, it actually happens on transition from anything to completed or aborted. So on transition when we go from any state to complete it, we stop ourselves. And when we go from anything 
to abort it, not underscore, we also check ourselves. Okay, that's nearly there. So we go between all these states, we receive the messages, all fantastic. Now we better start sending the images. This is the meat. So I still have the active, this bit. This is where we will be receiving the images from the phone. That's still nowhere near good enough. So let's, let's do something about that. So when we receive, let's deal with, say, images. But, you know, images or frames, they, they all sort of fall down the same line. Let me just go next so I don't have to do that much typing. Ooh, excellent. And now we have the images. So there we go. So we're in the active state. When we receive a frame message containing the frame is, that's the actual byte array or the bit of the H.264 stream. And we're in a state start, we are in it with data is starting. So this is the first frame we ever see. We don't have a decoder for it yet. What we're going to do is to create a new H.264 decoder given this count coins function. That's slightly below. So what do we do? Well, the decoder is going to call this function every time it decodes a frame. So every time it has an image from the, from the stream, it calls this. Uh, it doesn't do anything too clever just yet. But we'll get there in a, in a second. And the minimum number of coins is simply the lowest number of coins that we accept to be displayed. So there we are. The decoder context decoder context wants a function that takes an array of bytes and returns a unit. And that's exactly what this function, when applied to coins, that's exactly what remains. So we apply this, so we eat this first parameter list, imagine that, and what remains is an array of bytes unit. And that's exactly the parameter of the constructor of decoder context. Excellent. And then we move, we stay in this current state, so we stay in the active state, but we modify the data. So whereas before we had starting with a minimum number of coins, we are now active, but running with this decoder. So when we receive another frame, we're already running, and if the frame length is greater than zero, then we decode that one frame and stay, stay in this current state, and so on and so forth. Until we get here, this is where frame.length is equal to zero. That's the last one we've received. So we close the context and go to completed. That's all there is to it. So this is the main machinery of our state recognition, what is it called? Record session actor. So the only thing, the only tiny little thing that remains is all the integration work. Um, so what we need to do is to actually send these images here. So how do we do that? Well, we actually take advantage of the AMQP stuff. So I've typed in AMQP operations. That's going to define a method called AMQP ask. This is the AMQP actor reference. That's the one we created earlier. And we send a message to the given exchange by the given routing key. And here's the payload, the array of bytes that we're sending. And what we're, going to, what we're going to do is ask the MQP actor to reply to the request. The request is published, the payload to this given exchange on the routing key. And when the response arrives, we are going to take it and map it. If the response contains a delivery, taking the body, we take the string representation of the body. All unblocking, all jolly good, but except all of you strongly typed people, you should be crying and despairing. This, this is horrific. The future of a string. And I said, we have JSONs, right? Stringly typed. I even have a slide for that. I think, I think this is the slide, isn't it? Now, uh, does anyone know XKCD? Right, so you've seen this one. And sometimes we have these magical bullets. And uh, one magical bullet in types of programming, well, I suppose now that we know regular expressions, we can do a little replacement and do just that in Scala. So how about it? What we're going to do, yes, back to the demo, very good. 
So instead of returning a future of string, what we would like is a future of some type A. So not a future of string, but a future of A's. So the question here is, how do we go from string to A? So what we would like to be given is a JSON reader of A. So JSON reader of A in Scala speak would be a type class, and there are many different instances that we will create. Actually, one instance, and the compiler will give it to us implicitly. And so what we need to do is do, a, I suppose, this reader dot read, indeed, JSON parser parse no? type to S. That will do. Excellent. So this JSON reader that's been given to us, loaded from the implicit scope, for the type A can now give us an instance of A, and because we are mapping a future, we will get a future of A. And so it's now really easy to add JSON parsers. Now, of course, I don't want to type up too much anyway, so I've used Spray's default JSON protocol. This is actually really convenient. So this coin format, coin format, and coin response format represent instances of JSON reader for coin, JSON reader for coin, and JSON reader for coin response. And so when I actually call it, the compiler will be clever enough to look through the implicit scope and say, aha, it's this reader because you say you want a coin response. It's this JSON reader that I will give you. So, well, why don't we, why don't we wire it all together? this bit here that we've now done. So instead of, we still return unit, but what we're going to do is to send a message over MQT to the CM exchange and the CM coin scheme by taking the payload of this frame F. And on success of that, so this is a non-blocking operation, as we can start this IO operation, and when it successfully returns, we are going to, ah yes, we still need to compare that the number of coins in the result is greater than the number that we requested. When that's true, we're going to send a message to the Jabber actor. So I suppose this is nearly it. This, this should really work. So, so let's just see. Let's run. So I happen to have a command line interface. So that's our session, and I'm going to send JSON score stream to from this file. So this is going to read the file and send bits of the file to the decoder, as if I were doing HTTP host. So let's see. All right, well, that's, stuff is being sent, sure enough. Doesn't look really good, does it? Mm. You can probably tell that I know this should have gone wrong, but still. So what's happening? So coordinator, yes, and it says unhandled event frame. See, so here's the byte array. You may have noticed, this is actually quite interesting, right? We don't even box. This is the actual byte array. And in state active, how is, how is that even possible? Well, well, well. So what do we have? A frame arrives. Aha. But it's the data that's different. When we go to active, we don't modify the data. So we are in a, we are here in state active, but with data empty. Well that's no that's no use, right? We have been starting minimum number of points. And that should fix it. So let's see. Starting, so that shows a jolly good Java window, but still nothing. What could possibly be happening? Well, um, mm, we're going to have to take a look at the RapidMQ console to figure it out. All right, well, wow. So we have 237 messages that we received. Those are the frames from the video. 
So we've successfully decoded all Berlin. We have 237 messages. We've published so many per second, 25 odd per second. That's still good, right? 25 per second, that's roughly the video. But what could be happening? It seems that no one's consuming the messages. It seems that we have forgotten to write our C++ program. Now, I happen to have it already running. I wouldn't torture you through that. So let's just run this. And this is a little C++ program that consumes the messages. They're all gone. Except by now it's too late for our ACA program. It's given up waiting. It said, well, pff, no response. I'm not going to even talk to you. So I suppose we better start a new session. And let's send it the same command. Points, which are empty for. So messages are now should be going through. Aha, here we are. Those are the coins exactly as I pointed them out. So drop them with my hand. Perfect. So this works exactly as we expected. Except unfortunately, command line interface, I mean, if I could, I could give my users command line interface. Look, I don't have a problem with it. But I suppose we have to do this internet and I devices. So we'd better build our REST API. Uh, that's not, luckily, that's not going to be actually too hard to do. We already have the API trait, and we say that instances of the API trait need to mix in core. And core, as we'll pull it further down the line, needs to mix in core configuration. Now, in the API, what we would like to construct is a recognition service, which will be our HTTP service. I'll show you how that looks like in a minute. It's as a system dot actor off pops of you recog service. Let's see how this I type properly, taking the coordinator actor. Okay. Um, what we're going to do as well is bind this recognition service to a specific port and specific IP address. So in our case, we'll bind it to over HTTP. We'll send it a HTTP.bind message. So this is the HTTP extension of ACA that gives you back an actor that manages all the HTTP server connections. So all that we're binding is binding this recognition service to, um, let's bind it to all local addresses on port 8080, like so. All right, there we are. So that, that's essentially HTTP server. We now have a non-blocking HTTP server that can receive many different connections from the clients. And yet it has access to all the components in the core, like so. See, the coordinator is the coordinator value from the core tray. Equally, the system is the system value from the core tray. Now, right, so I suppose the last bit is how does this record service look like? Well, uh, depressingly not implemented. So all that we have to do is handle the HTTP messages that ACA sends us. So one of the first messages that we get, as an example, is HTTP connected. So when a client connects, http.connected, so someone connected to us. So what are we going to do? Well, now that we have an incoming connection, we need to register someone who's going to be responsible for handling all other communication with that client. Now, in this case, what we're going to use is a singleton handler. In other words, we will register ourselves to handle the messages from every client. Okay, well, how about that? Well, we reply to the sender with HTTP.register self. And now, any client that connects will first go here. We then register ourselves, that's the self. And so we say, we promise now to handle all other messages that are coming from that client. Now, what are these messages? Well, I suppose one of these could be HTTP request. That's what the clients do to us. They send requests quite unreasonably. 
Um, and there's an awful lot of typing we need to match the methods, the URLs. So let me just fast forward a little bit to here. Right, so I've typed in all that, but we matched the paths. So when someone does a post to the root URI, then we send the begin message to the coordinator. And we ask for it. So we get a future of string. Remember the, the name of the session, the identifier of the session that we've generated. And it will reply to the client. So we send to the client, when it's successful, we send to the client an HTTP response, which carries the session ID. So I can make a post to slash record as the URL, and I get back the session ID. What's more interesting is this. If I get a chunked request start, so this is when the client wants to do a chunked post, because what you don't want to do is to receive 10, 20, a stream. You don't even know how long this MJPEG stream or this H.264 stream would be. So you can't just accumulate all the post data and then send it all at once. What you want to receive from the client is one chunk of the data at a time. This is like file upload, right? Everyone knows that. Now, depending on which URI the client posts data to, so say we support MJPEG and H H.264 encoding, we create a streaming record service. So this is another actor, and we have an actor per client connection. So client opens a streaming connection to us, and we then say, depending on which one it is, we then say, right, register this actor that we've created a few lines above as a handler for that client. Well, nothing could be simpler than here. Here's the, here's the code, right? So when it then receives a message chunk, this is the bit of the HTTP request, then all that we're going to do is to send it to the coordinator. Now, what is that it that we're sending? Well, it's whatever message applied to string an array of byte returns. In some cases, it might be an image. In some cases, it might be a chunk of the H.264 string. So I think that this is nearly ready. Ah, no. One more. We actually have to write the server. This is really terrible, isn't it? So how would one write an actual HTTP server? Now that we have all the components ready, so this is the depressing and really powerful part. Let's call it REST, object, REST. Now, what is it? Well, it's, it, it's an app so that we get a public static void main. Well, what do we need? We need core. And because we say core, we promise to implement core configuration. Well, we already have one, core config. Uh, but that's just like the shell before, right? That would miss the RESTful API. So how about that? And we resolve all the imports. That's the one. Well, that should be it, really. So I can now run this. And that will give me a RESTful API. Yes, so that's actually what I need to do is stop the previous one. and do a make db post to local host h80 slash record I do a post ah it's finished why is it waiting for cdn.twitter.happy.com I really shouldn't be doing that Space in IntelliJ idea, we have rebuilt project. Run rest again. Hmm. How could that be happening? Local host. Let's 
So we get a response back as the UID of the session. And so if I could now use the Chrome extension to open a streaming HTTP connection, all would work. Except I can't really do that. So why don't we, why don't we try with a phone? Now this will include a little bit of experimentation because um, both need to be on the same network. I need to, from the app that I have on the phone, post to the server that's running here. And the network that we have here has a, has a firewall that doesn't really allow that. So personal hotspot to the rescue. So, I should have a reasonable IP address now. 172.20.10.2. So, I'll run the app just so you believe me that I'm actually doing it. This is where it's going to fail. 172.20.10.2. Press the pre-dev button. It includes the video that I've just shown you. And what we're going to see is, hopefully, the coins being printed out by doing first a post, which obtains the session ID, and then a streaming HTTP request. So, let's go. Ready? Press the button. There it is. Oh, that's not looking good. Are we actually receiving the responses? Servers running, of course. So now I need to start one, which one of them must have failed by not binding to the port 8080, uh, which is now obvious, but there we go. One more attempt, and then we'll see hopefully the messages coming through. So I'll run the app. My IP address is again. is actually sending the messages. It took a long time over personal Wi-Fi, but there we go. I was going to show you how, how I actually do it on a piece of paper, but I never trust the lights. It never works. So let's, let's try again. Just for good show, but what we can do now is to see how the messages are coming in. So you can see that we are sending messages in. They are being consumed and the record session actor is eating the messages back from the queue. I can even see the connections that we are making to the RapidMQ console. So you can see that we have a connection from our Rapa application, and then we have connections that the C++ application makes. So that's, that's pretty much all I have to show you. Uh, luckily, it worked, uh, even through adverse situation. I will, I suppose.
suppose now is the time for questions. Uh, I'll start you with one. Here's the code. Anyone wants to know where the code is? There it is, with uh, a description of how to build it. You will need, need OpenCV, you will need GCC compiler toolkit, you will need RabbitMQ, you will need Erlang, and you will need Java. Other than that, you're good to go. Okay, any questions?